we may have just the smallest of candle addictions. It's candle making day. 10 pounds of beeswax. Yeah, I went all in. This is how much I weighed as a baby. Not bad. As you may be able to tell from the numerous containers before us, 15 total, honestly, I thought there would be more. Matt and I have gotten a little bit obsessed with candles. It was kind of him actually. I had the whole oil dispenser thing and we were doing that for a long time, but we are exceptionally lazy people. And just having to like refill that thing with water anytime we wanted to use it was already enough to like lower it on our list of priorities. But Matt loves fire, as do so many boys. So lighting a candle, we are not too lazy for. I guess this would just be from the last 10 months that we've been living here because our candle obsession started in New York, but we did not pack empty candle containers when we moved across country, I think. We burned through them incredibly fast and I didn't really realize how expensive candles were because it'd been so long since I bought any, if I ever bought any. I don't know if candles were something I'd ever bought in my previous life because I was always living in like dorm rooms and ship cabins and apartments where candles weren't allowed. Heck, they might not be allowed in this apartment, but we did not check. These candle containers are so nice and like sturdy and solid that once we burn down to the bottom and you get just that little bit there that won't really burn anymore, I've just been, oh my God, this one still smells so good. Anyway, I've just been stashing them underneath my desk because I don't wanna throw this away. This is totally reusable. And having now stashed a significant number of these, I figured it was about time that I recycle, reuse, and save us some money on candles for a bit. So I'm gonna make my own. I have 10 pounds of beeswax. I got some of the wooden wicks. I got some adorable little labels to put on the front of these once I've changed them to whatever scent I want. And I have a bunch of essential oils to use as the scents. And then I bought a super cheap pan from Goodwill. Don't really need the lid, but it came with it. This pan is gonna be pretty much ruined. If you saw my lotion making video, <laughs> you may recall that I used my like regular saucepan that we use for dinner every night, some nights. And it was exceptionally difficult to clean. Yeah, not doing that again. Not gonna take that risk. So cheap ass pan it was. I don't know how much one of these holds, maybe like one pound. So I assume I could get at least 10 candles out of this. And let me tell you, this thing was a lot cheaper than 10 candles. Let's do it. So the first actual thing I have to do is get out the remainder of the wax that's still in every single one of these candles. And then I'd like to also peel the labels off the front so that I can put my own label on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is kind of working. It left some sticky residue behind, but I can cover that. Not bad, one label down. I guess we'll start with labels. Ooh. Oh. I want to know, please tell me, if you also get big candles like this, what do you do with the containers once you've burned through the candle? This just seems like a really sad thing to throw away. So what do you do to recycle or reuse these kind of large containers? Give me more ideas because I think I'm going to have even more of these things left over. Problem child. All right. We have delabeled. So now the part that I don't really know how I'm gonna do it. I have a variety of tools here. Grapefruit spoon, butter knife. Neither one seems like a great option. We're gonna see what happens. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just this candle, but this wax is super soft. So grapefruit spoon, very helpful for this. I'm also going to like save all this extra wax because there's a significant amount in some of this, kind of. So I might do a conglomerate candle where I just melt down all of the wax from all of these leftover candles and see what it smells like. I mean, we have specific kind of scents that we like. There's a lot of eucalyptus in here. There's a lot of mint. We don't do like super sweet things. I don't like a candle that smells like baking. I want baking to smell like baking. So nothing vanilla, nothing cinnamon, none of that. I think we like 
herby, citrusy, tropical stuff best. All right, so the real question here is, can I get the little wick bases out of the bottom of this? Because so far, oh, there went one. Oh, there went another one. And there went the other one. All right, there's one done. Now I just have to do that more. I'm gonna get waxy. Also, I might be permanently ruining this grapefruit spoon. Sacrifices. One thing I am loving about this project already is that it smells amazing. And smell is very important to me. I'm very sensitive to it. So a good smelling project is a delightful project. Wax everywhere. So I quickly realized that there was probably a way easier way to clean these things out than scraping the wax out with a grapefruit spoon. I could just light all the candles and let the wax turn to liquid and then pour it out. And that is when I became aware of why so many of them still had a chunk of wax in the bottom. And it's because they won't light anymore. So only five of them I could get to light. So then I came up with another plan, and this was the one that worked the best and the fastest and the easiest. So if you're trying to clean out candle containers, I highly recommend this. Don't know if it's safe. Never take me for safety precautions. I just boiled some water in a pan, and then I stuck a candle container in and let it sit there. And it usually only took like 10 seconds for the bottom of the wax to melt. And then I could just pop out the entire thing, pour out whatever melted wax was left over. And this did the handy thing of softening all of the glue inside that was holding down the wicks. So then the wicks all just poured out or popped out really easily as well. Twas grand. So first point of interest, that's a lot of wax. I am definitely recycling this now. It has a generally pleasant smell altogether. It'll be a weird light blue color probably. So this I think I'm gonna leave till last and whatever candle containers aren't filled up with my freshly scented wax will get the conglomerate, shall we call it. What is my next step? Ooh, I did not remove the sticker from the bottom of this pan before putting it on the stove. Whoops, I'm sure it's fine. Now I wanna find out how much this holds and I don't think it's quite the same in the pellets because there's gonna be airspace in there, but it's not supposed to be filled to the top. So I think if I fill one of these to the top with the pellets, that should be a fairly accurate amount for how much I need, yeah? And then I can go by weight so that I don't have to keep measuring it out, you know, by digging it. One candle's worth 247, so 250. So I've got 500 grams of beeswax pellets, which should be two full candles. Okay, so last thing that I need is the scents. To the oils drawer. You don't have to come this time. I really do not understand how I ended up with this many oils. It's not a thing I'm really into. So two scents that I really like together are rosemary and lemon, which I have oils for both but I kind of want to add actual rosemary and actual lemon to it as well and see what happens. What if I diced up some rosemary and added that and some lemon zest to the wax? It wouldn't burn. So when the candles finished, there would just be kind of clumps of grossness in the bottom. But I do think it would infuse a more natural smell, right? I don't know why I'm asking, I'm gonna do it anyway. My rosemary plant has been like really quietly surviving for the last six months, but not really thriving. I'm not sure why. Possibly because it's winter. <laughs> Saved. Also, you're welcome for the weird noises I make. I wanna go ahead and put some labels on here. I feel like I should have written on this before I put it on here. Lemon rosemary. I think we're ready to melt some wax. I think adding some lemongrass as well as lemon oils will really help the scent stand out. So we're gonna try that. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to uh, how much scent needs to be in here. I like strong scents. I figure if you're burning a candle, you might as well be able to smell it. I'm still mostly just getting pan, but I do smell lemon. And then let's schlup this stuff in. 
Well, I wish I had been filming that, but I had no freaking idea that was gonna happen. Um, so apparently citrus has a reaction with wax. Did I just ruin the wax? Fairly normal in the end. Why would citrus have such an interesting sort of like acid base reaction to beeswax? If I look it up and find out later on, I'll tell you now. Okay, let's get this guy poured in. Mm. Mm, my wick. Have I ever mentioned how good I am at making messes? Thoughts. It's gonna take a lot more than 250 to fill one candle. So, this is why we experiment. Did I make a giant mess or just a mid-sized mess? Looks mid-sized. So 500 grams filled like one and a third. So I think I should get another 250. That's not a good idea. That's gonna go back on the stove. That was a crap load. So you better be good. All right, so my second calculation was basically correct. 750 grams of wax filled these two candles. Although I am realizing now in retrospect that this is like a slightly different quantity than this. I think 750 is probably a safe bet all around. Now it is uh, basically rinse and repeat. I wanna do lavender next because lavender is my go-to, you know, sleepy time scent. And I also have a lavender plant outside. So again, I'm gonna dice up some stuff and throw it in there and see if it makes any difference because I don't know why, I just think it's fun. Lavender, I'm pretty sure. Ah, ah, no. I think after the lavender, I'm gonna go ahead and melt down the leftover wax over there, just so that I'm using it up and I'm sure to have containers. And that is gonna be called the conglomerate candle. Let's see if I can spell that. There we have it, gonna be good. All right, it's time to find out if lavender has any chemical reaction with beeswax. You know what? A very slight one. So interesting. No, no, I need you to go inside the candle. I do not approve of this. No, don't do that. Why? Pouring stuff is the worst. Please cooperate. No! Why do you behave in this manner? It is so unnecessary and so rude. You have made me do this and I do not appreciate you for it. You better let me pour you and just not cause problems. That was much harder than it should have been, but we survived. Okay, next up is conglomerates. Oh goodness. At this point, I'd like to start cracking on with the rest until I run out of wax or run out of containers. All right, we're doing mostly eucalyptus in this one with just like a hint of cedar wood to kind of balance it. She says as though she knows what she's doing. Ooh, now let's see if I can pour this without making a frickin' mess. Last three. Kind of the randos here. That is 870 grams, which I think spread across the three containers will be perfect. They might not be like super duper full, but I think it'll be good. Could I possibly have planned this out better? No, because I didn't plan it out. And this one is going to be called Citrus Explosion. 
Yeah. So if my knowledge of citrus smells serves me right, we want to start with like the orangey ones rather than the lime and lemon and lemongrass ones because those are more overpowering. There we go. That was all the tangerine I had. I also have kumquat. Now I have clementine. Look at me finally using some of these up. I've had these literally for years. Now we'll hit it with a little bit of lime or a lot of bit of lime, some lemon, a touch of lemongrass. Oh yeah, I have this one called red mandarin. I don't know what that is. It is in no way strong enough. So I've got some wild orange. We're gonna dump in a bunch of this. Honestly, it's really nice to have a reason to use these because if we're gonna diffuse oils, it's pretty much always lavender or eucalyptus, maybe peppermint. And nowadays we just light candles. There we go. Another one bites the dust. Smell like citrus for me. Still pretty light. Gonna hit it with some more lemon and lime and then we're going with it. If that's not enough, I'll eat my hat. I don't wear hats. I really, really do not want to make a mess on this one. She says, and then makes a giant mess. This time, I don't want to make a mess. I say that like I have control over it. It's just gonna happen. Or not, it mocks me. When I think it's gonna happen, it's like now, everything is fine. Whatever. And that is it. I may change my mind about this later and come back and clean these things, but for now, these are now wax dishes. Thank you for your sacrifice. Well, we got a lot of candles. With that 10 pound bag and the leftover, I managed to fill all 15. For measurement's sake, I would say probably means that a 10 pound bag of beeswax pellets can fill around a dozen of these kind of containers. I have much higher hopes for the smell now because I went out grocery shopping while waiting for these to dry. And when I came back, the smell of candles hit me in the face pretty hard. So maybe it's just in the air, but hopefully it's in the candles. So the one weird thing that I saw upon coming home is that the candles have not dried evenly across the top. They're like sunken in a ring around the wick, some a lot more than others. I find this especially interesting for two reasons. One, it did not seem to affect the leftover wax candles, which dried nice and flat on top. And two, a lot of these had already solidified at least on top before I left, and there was no sign of sinkage in any of them. They like semi-solidified flat and then sunk. This is yet another mystery for me. Once again, I'll look it up probably while editing this video. And if I find an answer, I'll tell you right here. So all that to say, I'm still pretty darn happy with these. I don't think that the dippage will affect their ability to burn. We'll just have to wait and see though. For now, I do need to trim all of the wicks. All right, and all that remains is to light one up. one afternoon's work and these should last us for the next year. And the delightful thing is that when we burn through all of these again, I can buy another 10 pound bag of wax and make 15 more. Ta-da! Wouldn't it suck if this just like fizzled and went out? All right, well that's been burning long enough that I'm gonna call it a success. Well, Thanks for joining me on this delightful half a day project, which was one of the most realistically useful things I've done in a while. Highly recommend making your own candles. I will see you next week.